Man, well, I can a little toss with Jesus, don't you? I'm glad we can. And uh, somebody said, why do we pray? Asked me a question. Supposed to be a theology, I guess, question. Said, why do we pray if God already knows the answer and all that? You know why? Because he's our father. And we have access to the throne of grace. And uh, it ain't always the answer you want sometimes, but he does give you an answer. Can I tell you something? He answers all of our prayers. Either does it, or wait, or uh, no. Amen. Amen. We think because we ain't heard from God, he ain't answering our prayers, but he does. And we appreciate the Lord. It's, it's good to be here this morning. Appreciate you being here. Smile real big. Not to me, to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you think somebody's getting ready to shoot you or something. I don't know. But it is good to be here. And uh, we appreciate you. Remember today's the uh, offering for the Bibles. Remember that. And next Sunday will be the change offering for the youth. And then be in prayer for the election coming up next Sunday. Be on during the Sunday school hour. And a lot of things we need to be praying about. And positions we need to be praying about. And uh, asking God's will be done, not ours. And uh, we, you know, we just need God to do it. And uh, so we won't want you to be much in prayer for that. There is things available. And, uh, you know, and, and I want to say this. You'll find them during the Sunday school hour. Don't nominate somebody if they don't come for Sunday school. Amen. Because right, if they ain't here for Sunday school, they don't need to have a position in the church. And uh, I say that every time. And you get looks like, well, that's awful, preacher. Hey, listen, it looks bad on you. Looks bad for a deacon. Yes, sir. Hey, if he don't show up for Sunday school. I mean, it looks bad even, even if their wife, be honest with you. It looks bad. And not only that, but for the pastor. I mean, if the pastor showed up after Sunday school, you'd be, I mean, you'd get a new pastor. You'd get tired of it after a while. Yes, sir. And in uh, the pastor's wife. I mean, it just, uh, so much. We need to be worried about what God thinks and not what people think in, in our own way. And uh, so remember that, the election next Sunday, and then be in prayer for the election next Sunday, and then vacation Bible school will be Wednesday through Friday, uh, June the 23rd through 25th at 6 p.m. nightly. And uh, let me read you this. Well, the women's Bible study on Tuesday, on the Monday night, so remember that at 7 o'clock in the fellowship hall, so do remember that. And uh, this is from Brother Jamie Healy. And um, it's the gospel tent meeting over in uh, Spruce Pine. It's going to be up above the Ford place, the Chevrolet place. That was a disgrace, wasn't it? <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Chevrolet place up on the hill uh, on July 2nd, community prayer under the tent. Uh, be be uh, July the 2nd at 7 p.m. It's community prayer. There's people getting together and praying. And on July 3rd, community uh, meal, free community meal, 
and bounce houses and gospel singing. And that'll be from 12 to 3 p.m. And then the tent revival begins on Sunday night, July 4th. And uh, we'll be going... on, I guess, through the week at least. So be much in prayer for that. And he said, pray about moving your service and uh, we'll move either one or the other, either Sunday night or Wednesday night. Uh, be good to do that. You really don't feel right in moving both because sometimes people do come visit and they show up and if you're not here, they're going to say, well, they didn't want to have church and don't understand the situation. But we will be moving either Sunday night or Wednesday night. We'll decide which one to do that. And then tent meeting begins Monday, July 5th, 5th, nightly at 7 p.m. And it's located on the hill above the Chevy Place. And if you don't know that where that is, it's in Spruce Pine up on the hill. Isn't that a new fire department up there? Yeah, they're in the midst of that. So remember that. And uh, let's be praying about that meeting. Go, go nightly. You know, let's go every bit we can and uh, back this and uh, pray that God meet. We need revival. Not a stirring. You know what you do when you stir something? You stir it and it'll mix it up for a while and then it settles right back down. You know what I'm praying for? I'm praying for a Holy Ghost, sin killing revival, something that will last. People won't get excited about church for a week or two. Then that's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll make a difference in them from days and weeks to come, months to come, years to come. Amen. And if you really have revival, that's what it will be. It won't be the, a moment thing. You can shout it out, have the best preacher during the week. And uh, then on, on Sunday, if you come back in here and, and there's nothing there to show that you've been in a meeting, then you didn't get revival. You got stirred. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just got fired up over a good preacher preaching or something. We needed God to move in a mighty way. Yes, sir. Not only in Wyndham Baptist Church, but in churches around us, in churches in Yancey County. And I, I'm telling you, we got some of the best churches in Wyndham Baptist Church. I feel like it's the best church uh, to me. I mean, I'm pastor, and, uh, and I, I still believe if I didn't come here, I still believe it's the best church around. I just love Wyndham Baptist Church. But I, I'm telling you, we got some of the best churches in Yancey County. I'm talking about men of God that have preached, Brother Jeff. All around. I mean, men of God that are rare back and peel the walls. Amen. We do. We got some of the best churches in Yancey County, but we still need revival. Amen. Need God do a work in our hearts. Get our kids off the streets. Hey, get our husbands in the church. Amen. Get our wives in the church. I mean, we need God move. Get people faithful. Amen. I mean, hey... Faithful to God, not to your pastor, but faithful to God. How we need that in these days. And uh, I do appreciate the Lord. Give me some ushers this morning. Give me some ushers. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's give him the wave offering. And he's worthy. Yes, sir. Amen. He's worthy. I don't worry about you getting tired of it. I know you don't because that's we're praising him. He's worthy to be praised. And if we praised him all day long like that, it, it'd be all right. What a God we serve. Man, God has answered so many prayers. I've seen him move and do so many things. And you say, I ain't seen him do nothing. Open your eyes. You're looking in the wrong direction. Looking in the wrong. Look what God's done for us in 2000 through 2020 and into 2021. How blessed we are. We have not been affected by the virus that much. Very little. But we're thankful that God has took care of us, and uh, we're, we just give him praise for it. Uh, Brother Mike, uh, get us a song. Brother Darren, ask blessings on this, will you?
Amen. Wave at each other. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're going to do something. God put on my heart just a while ago. Uh, a little different this morning. But we know Darren and Donna is got a battle. Amen. So what we want, I want us to do this morning before I preach. We want to get around them and pray. Amen. That God move on this. Amen. You see, it don't mean much to me if it's your family it would. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I ain't doing this to embarrass them. They didn't ask for this neither. See, my God just put on our heart right there to do this. And Darren, we want you to get over here on this side if you will. Donna, you come over here on this side. Women, get around her. Get around her. Pray that God move on this family and help this family. And touch that son out there. Pray that God touch him. Dear precious Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning, we gather here in the hour, dear Heavenly Father, on the behalf of this, this young son, Lord, there, Lord, this family, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, the situation, God, you know all about it tonight. Oh, God, I pray you move on to dear Lord, we need you, dear Heavenly Father, to make God, that son, I tell you, to help, but I pray you help me. God, I pray you put a hedge about us, God, that you let your hands be upon us. God, I ask your heart to know how much you love them, dear Heavenly Father. Let them have a church heard of you, Lord, that they have a burden upon us, Lord. You said if two or three would gather together thy name, Lord. That we would bring the police before the throne of God that you hear our prayers, Lord. We know that the answer's on the way, dear Heavenly Father. So God, help us today to stay humble to the foot of the cross. And let us ask God today, not our will, Lord, but thy will be done. Lord, we know you're going to work it out for the best of those that love you today, Lord. God, these are your children, Lord, with hearts heavy. But Lord, not just let us pray to God, but give us a burden to take with us. Let us take it home, dear Heavenly Father. Let us continue to call this subject out there, Lord. We see you move on this matter, Lord. This is what you do, dear Heavenly Father. Let us give you the praise, the glory, and honor for it all now, Father. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior's name, we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Love on them. Love on them a little bit. Let them know you love them. Amen. Have your Bibles. Turn with us to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. I have preached, no doubt, along this line here, probably from the same place. But it's different this morning. And uh, we're living in a wicked day. We're living in a troubled day. But for those that are saved by the grace of God, it shouldn't surprise us. Amen. 
Hey, we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, it didn't catch uh, God by surprise. And if you know God, it shouldn't ca- if you know this Bible, it shouldn't catch you by surprise. And people asked, how can we live right in these days that we're living in? I got good news for you. You can. You can. If you have your Bibles, in the book of Genesis chapter 6, find your place, stand with us. Not to reverence me, but in reverence to the Word of God. If you're able, if you're not, God knows. But he said in Genesis chapter 6, and, and uh, the Bible said in verse 4, in there were giants in the earth, and in those days, and after, also after that, the, when the sons of God came into, in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now you can look, read commentary after commentary, and there's going to be a lot of people have a different opinion about that. And I ain't got the answer neither. I know what I think and what I believe it is, but uh, nobody has the, really the true answer. But I know they begin to mix. And when they begin to mix, the Bible said in verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was ill only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, in the creeping, th- in the, in, in the creeping thing, in the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. And I like verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Our Father, we love you. I thank you for allowing us to come to church this morning. Lord, I'm thankful to be in the church. God, thank you for being so good to us and saving me. And God, putting us in a ministry. Lord, I thank you for Wyndham Baptist Church. God, you know our heart this morning. We want to be a help to the church. God, we never want to hinder. Lord, I pray you be with that and it's lost. that it may be sitting on our pew. God, be with that. And Lord, it's having trouble living right. In. And Lord, they're, they're not living like you are too for you. I pray for them. God, I pray, Lord, you be with those that are hurt and those who are in storms. God, I ask you to help uh, Sister Donna and, and Darren. Lord, I ask you to help them be with Mike and his family. God, be with Laura this morning. God, as she's in search of a vehicle, I pray you'd put the right one in front of her. God, I pray, Lord, your will be done in my life. Lord, we love you. I thank you for everything that you've done. And we'll honor you and we'll praise you. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. I want to preach on this thought this morning on living right in a troubled world days. I think that's the way I got it. Living right in troubled days. I mean, we're, we're in them days that the Bible talks about how that's going to come. We, uh, how we find in Timothy, he said in the last days that perilous times are going to come. You know what that is? Dangerous times. How we find that uh, things are going to wax worse and worse. Hey, people say it's going to get better. Hey, I'm telling you, I, I don't, as far as down here, it probably won't. But it will get better for the child of God. Amen. Hey, it will get better. Lucille said it seemed like things are coming left and right. I told her this morning, I said, there's a brighter day coming. Hey, listen, for the child of God, hey, there is a day coming. We won't have to worry about all this. But right now, in the day that we're living in, they're troubled days. Everywhere you look, trouble. Everywhere you look, problems. Everywhere you look, there's people that's, uh, in a battle, in storms, or uh, in some way or another. Uh, but the Bible said that God saw the wickedness of man. Hey, God saw all this. I mean, it was a time of wickedness, a time the thoughts of man's heart uh, was evil continually. Where do you think Hollywood gets their stuff from? 
Hey, where do you think these video games have that shows people uh, shooting and blood flying? And uh, where do you think that comes from? It don't come from God. It's evil. And that's what's on men's mind. Evil continually. How are we going to get beer in Yankee County? That was always in their mind. And they come up with a way that tricked and to get it in here had this by a certain abundance. Hey, listen, a man is continually trying to think of something evil. A day of weakness, a day of their minds, a time the earth was filled with violence. Do away with guns. Won't it take care of all that. There'll still be something happening. There'll still be killings. Hey, they'll still be. Hey, hey, can I tell you this? I throw this in there for nothing. Hey, it ain't the gun killing people. Hey, it's the person behind the gun. Hey, that ain't got enough sense and got lost their mind. Hey, that's what's killing people. Yeah. Oh, listen, time of great violence. And the man, God saw the man was corrupt on the earth. Wicked time. A wicked time. Hey, can we not look around this morning and say we're living in those times right now? Amen, brother. Amen. Hey, we're living in that time right now. Hey, but in verse uh, 8, said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hey, listen. Hey, in the midst of all the wickedness, hey, in the midst of all the violence, in the midst of all the corruption, in the midst of all that was evil, that minds, all that, God looked down and he saw a light. Hey, he looked down and saw a light. Hey, you see any time that wickedness and darkness are evil and all that, it has to do with darkness. Hey, even sin has to do with darkness. And the Bible said God saw all of that. God saw the wickedness. He saw the evil thoughts of the heart. He saw the violence. And God saw the corruption way upon the earth. But God also seen a light by the name of Noah. How in the world could that be? Hey, can I remind you that Adam and Eve's in a perfect environment yes, in the Garden of Eden? Yes, hey, can I remind you there was no sin at that time? Right. Oh, but what God done, he made God, man a free moral agent. He had a choice. He could make a choice. Right. You know what Adam done? He made a choice. He could have chose. I mean, right there in the midst of the garden was the tree of life. And also right next to it was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But there was nothing appealing to the tree of life. There was nothing there to pull them in. But the tree of knowledge and good and evil, it had appeal to it. They looked at it and the devil said, hey, look at this fruit. Don't it look good? I want to tell you something. Just because it looks good don't mean it is good. Hey, can I preach right there for this a moment? Hey, young people, the world will have Hollywood and they say, look here, do this or do that. Hey, the, your friends are, are taking pot and drugs. Hey, do this and do that. Oh, it'll make you feel good. Oh, you'll have a good time. Hey, don't forget about the billboard. Looks good on this side. Stop some time and walk around to the other side. Hey, listen, the devil shows you the good stuff. He shows you what looks appealing. He shows you that. Oh, but he don't show you the heartache. He don't show people that drank the, uh, the cirrhosis of the liver. He don't show people that takes drugs, uh, aging and, and getting old before their time. You ought to go with a ride with me up Iceville sometime. And ride down the streets, Patton Avenue, Coming out there and going down McDowell Street. Hey, you ought to just take a ride with me sometime. Have these people on the street corners. Have their people are huddled up. And they look like it's a bunch of old people. But it's not old people. It's young people that got on drugs. And the drugs destroyed them. He ate at them. That meth will destroy you. Yes, the marijuana and everything else. Amen. 
Lord, if I could detour a young person this morning from the drugs, Brother Darren, I guarantee you, Darren, and them can testify, if I could pull somebody out of the alcohol hey, and say, hey, it ain't worth it. Do everything in my power, Brother Lee. Hey, I ain't had to face that. I wasn't a drunk. I wasn't a druggie. Hey, I wasn't all that, but I was lost and on the way to hell. Oh, but I've been around it. Hey, I've seen the results of it. I've seen what happens to people that get so wrapped up in it. Amen. Devil, don't show you that picture, by the way. But God looked down and he saw the light. And there he saw a man by the name of Noah. Preacher, that's impossible. That anybody could live right in them days. Hey, I'm glad, Brother Darren. Hey, Brother Lee, I'm glad even in the day that we're living in right now. Hey, there is still man out there that loves God. And that I preach the word of God and preach it straight. Hey, I'm glad for that. Hey, everybody ain't compromised, Brother Jeff. Everybody ain't turned and went the other way. Hey, yeah, there is still men that I preach. Hey, still women that I live right. Hey, there's still people that'll do right. Even in the wicked air that we're living in. Oh, you know what they are? They're light. You know what we're supposed to be? Light. Hey, man, don't light a candle and put it under a bushel. Uh, no, the old song says no. Hey, listen, he puts it on a candlestick. Hey, why does he do that? So everybody in the house can see. Oh, listen, a wicked time, but Noah, light was a shining. You say, but preacher, it wasn't wishing nobody, wasn't getting nobody in. He got his family in. Hey, can I tell you, hey, I'm, I'm going to go this. I was talking about it this morning. Hey, the way you live is a better message than what you can preach. Hey, you can get up and preach it, Brother Jeff, but if you ain't living it out there, it ain't going to mean a thing. Hey, listen, the people's not lit wanting to hear. They're wanting to see people living right, see people doing right. Hey, listen, your family won't get in until you live right at home. You can have the best church. You can have the best pastor. You can have the best choir. You can have the best everything. But until they see it in you, they will not want to go to church. Hey, until they see it in you, they won't want to be a part of the church. Oh, listen, and even in showing them sometimes they don't want to. But I'm going to tell you one thing, they ain't going to use me as an excuse. Hey, that great white throne judgment when they face God, hell, they won't look at me, Brother Jeff, and say, hey, preacher, why didn't you tell me? Hey, why didn't you share the word with me? Why didn't you point me to Jesus? They'll not do it. Hey, they won't do it. I don't want to be somebody's excuse that will not stand. There is not a leg to stand on. Ain't going to be that. If that why you preach, I can preach. Now, anybody going to use me as an excuse? They didn't hear. Whoa, they don't want to hear me. Why, why you live like you live? They ain't going to use me as an excuse. Why they didn't get in church. Oh, I'm telling you, even in the midst of all this, hey, God seen at Noah, and God, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, uh, hey, even with all that was going wrong. Let me give you a few things right here before I get to the, to the heart of it. Why did Noah live like he lived? I'm going to tell you, first of all, he didn't allow what was going on around him to pull him in. You know what? People say, well, if I don't conform to that, if I don't do like they're doing, I'm not going to fit right. I'd rather fit wrong and fit right. Hey, hey, I ain't interested in fitting in. I ain't interested in being in a clique. Hey, I ain't interested in being popular and where people say, oh, look at that preacher and all that. Hey, I really ain't interested in that. Hey, I'm interested in the Word of God to help you and to keep you and drag you out of the mess that you're in. Amen. 
He didn't allow all that's going on. You got to realize Noah's there in the midst of all the wickedness. He's there in the midst of all the evil men. He's seen it every day. He's seen it. He's right there among it. Oh, I'm telling you, he, he, he's right there, but he didn't let that persuade him. I'm going to tell you what's going on. A lot of people want to conform to the world. You know what that means? That means become like them. Become like them. Hey, the churches, Brother Jeff, just talking about this morning, you know why they do what they do and all that? They're conforming to the world. Hey, instead of, instead of staying around and staying where they're going to preach, we could get a lot in here if we uh, just change a few things. What God started worked. What God's going to end with is going to work. Hey, listen. Hey, the interest changing with uh, whether it's a smoke machine or drums or anything else. Hey, I am not interested in that. Hey, I'm interested in the old time Holy Ghost filled way. Sure, it ain't popular. Hey, it's not. Surely it ain't popular. Preaching the Word of God. I remember that evening in that little apartment room. He didn't tell me to change for the world. I remember when he called me, he said, preach the word. He didn't tell me, preach my convictions. He didn't even preach, tell you what I think and what I feel. Hey, you know what he said to do? Preach the word of God. Hey, the word of God is time when the world's on fire. Our convictions are come and go. But the world, word of God will stand in the, in the end. The Bible said it's forever settled in heaven. Hey, Romans 2, 12 and 2, he said, conform not to the world. That word conform means to fashion or to shape, to mold. In other words, we must be different and look different. Hey, when you get where you can't tell the difference in a saved person and a lost person, that's for something wrong. Am I right? Hey, 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 we're living this day. You heard me say this before. You've heard me tell this before. The one, uh, it used to be when somebody that looked weird and dressed weird and act weird went to the store, that people look at that and say, boy, that's weird. Let me tell you what's weird now is that family that's dressed up, just got out of church and going to Walmart. And there's people look at them like, oh, they think they're holier than everybody else. They just went to church. They just trying to live right. They're just trying to do right. Oh, but preacher, we got to drag out the mini skirts. Hey, we got to drag out the shirts that shows most of your front. Hey, we got just got to do that to fit in. You don't have to fit. I'd wear a granny's dress if you have to. Hey, Instead of fitting in with the crowd. Looking like the crowd, dressing like the crowd. I want to tell you something. Want something hurts me worse than anything. I go that through ice flying. And I realize a lot of these people are probably lost, but you see it everywhere. Hey, I'm gonna tell you. You go to church this morning. Some places you'll see it. It's those things they call leggings. Oh no, preacher, gonna preach on that. I ain't preaching on leggings. If you got your butt covered up, don't come to church with your butt is showing. That is not pants. Hey, that don't look right. Hey, what are you doing? You're conforming to the world. You're wanting to dress like the world. You ought to be different than the world. Say amen right there. I'll step outside. See if I can get amen out of Freddie right there. Give me a horn blow. Freddie. Am I right, Freddie? Hey. Yeah. I'm telling it right. People say, I go to church. I seen so-and-so, they're dressing like this, trying to conform to the world. If the whole world wears a miniskirt, don't wear them. Amen. Hey, listen, the whole world wears them tight pants. Got the tight breechy leg. I tell them, Jeff, this morning, I don't like them. I don't like something tight on my legs. I, I, I don't. I like a big legged. I like a Walmart. $21 pair of pants. Amen. 
that fits around my leg. Say amen. 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 Hey, listen, I ain't out to get you to look at my body and all that when I stand to preach. Hey, listen, preach the word of God. He said, don't conform to the world. Amen. Woo! I know I hit a few nerves right there, but hey, listen. That's what the Bible said. Not what I say, it's what the Bible said. I, I mean, hey, hey, we shouldn't dress like them, look like them, act like them, talk like them or anything else. Hey, we are to be a separate people, a peculiar people. Hey, we're a light in a dark world hey, that people should see Jesus in our life. <laughs> oh, man. i tell you something else he didn't do. He didn't let people persuade him to change. What are you saying, preacher? Well, I won't read that there. I guarantee you, they was probably people say, Noah, why don't you go this route? You know, you look a little different. If you'll change a little bit, you could do better. Miss Mar, I believe people was probably pulling at him, trying to get him to go their way, pull him out to the world. Hey, hey, they, they, hey, just come on with us. But Noah said, nope. I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to sway one way or the other. Hey, I know this. I ain't knocking preachers. You better be careful knocking preachers. Because if God's anointed, you better be careful. But, but I do want to say this. I know preachers that whatever crowd they're with is what they are. Hey, and I love them and I pray for them. I ain't knocking them. Hey, but as long as they're with this crowd, they're with whatever they're doing. If they're with that crowd, they're whatever they're doing. Hey, man is after pledge wanting people to pat them on the back and say how much he lo they love them. Amen. Hey, I've learned this. 15 year Wyndham Baptist Church. There was people said, preacher, we're glad you're our pastor. We'll, you, we, we, that's why I preach and we need because it got a little hot for them, they left. Amen. Hey, listen, I'm just telling you the truth. Hey, I could write a book. In every church I pastor, I could write a book. Hey, listen, people like the Word of God. They want it straight till it gets down in their family. Digging in their row. Digging taters in their row, they don't like that. That's good preaching as long as you're throwing it back. And if you're ever guilty of sitting there thinking, that's for so-and-so in the church, you better look out. Hey, you better look out. Preacher, that's so-and-so needed that. You probably needed it. Hey, if you didn't need it today, you're going to need it next week. Hey, if you didn't need it last week, you're going to need it today. Hey, somewhere, I'm telling you, hey, you're always going to need it. Hey, the Word of God will help you. If it's not right now, it'll be later. Amen. Phil Kidd, everybody knows Phil Kidd. A lot of people don't like Phil. I like him myself. I can listen to him. But you better be mature in the Word of God if you listen to him. I like him. And he was preaching a meeting over in California. Every year he'd preach this meeting. And these kids that was little, and he'd preach on the music. He'd preach on living right and doing right. And mom and dad, amen, preacher, you're right. They got them little ones there right now. And, you know, oh, amen, that ain't going to bother them. You're right, preacher. As time goes by, they come a time, their kids growed up. And he preached just like he always preached. And they come to him and said, preacher, you offended us. You offended my kids. First of all, there's a pastor somewhere that probably didn't preach the word of God. Amen. Hey, you offended them. Why? Their kids growed up and now they're the ones that's hearing the message that they see it in their kids. And all he's trying to do is get them kids out of them drugs. All he's doing is trying to get them out away from that alcohol. All he's doing, trying to get them away from that porn. All he's doing, trying to get them to live right, preach through the word of God. That's all he's doing. He did not let those around him persuade him. 
I thought of Judges 16, 16. Everybody knows the story of Samson. I mean, Samson was a man that was born to take care of the Philistines. I mean, God even said, your hair don't be cut. He's Nazarite from birth. Samson had the power of God on him any time, Brother Darren. The power of God fall on him. He'd do something awesome, something great. Can you imagine tying 300 foxtails together? That amazes me. That amazes me more than the carrying the gates 40 miles outside the city. Taking the jawbone of an ass and killing them Philistines, a thousand of them. He said, mighty. The world. I mean, God come on him. And he got where he wasn't supposed to be, close to where he shouldn't be. And he's there. And, and that the guy who went to Delilah, hey, I'm going to tell you, you got a weakness I got a weakness. We all got weaknesses. Amen. And let me tell you something. The devil knows exactly yes. what your weakness is. Yes. We read Samson saw a woman a couple of times. Warned it. Even mom and dad got on her to get him one. Hey, Samson saw that. He had a weakness for beautiful women. I believe I had. I don't think that I look like a dog. You? Hey, I don't think she looked terrible. He wanted her. The Philistine said, hey, we want him. We know exactly what his weakness is. They didn't go to Samson. They went to Delilah. Find out where his weakness is. She talked to him, said, hey, the, what's your weakness? Why, why you got all this power? And he'd give her some lame thing. And he'd go to sleep. She'd say, Philistines be upon you. Three times they showed up and he got up and whooped them. And she began to have them little tears. Be careful. When that person in your life, whether it's a man or a woman, starts weeping and saying, you really love me, you would do this. You'd do that. And the Bible said this. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. The Bible said this. When, and it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with the words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. That vexed means troubled, teased, provoked, irritated. What happened? They just kept on and kept on and kept on till he finally said, okay, here it is. I'm going to tell you something. I believe Noah probably faced that in that day. Daily. Why don't you come on, Noah? Why don't you come with us? Hey, come down and do this wickedness. Hey, do this and do that. Hey, but he didn't let that persuade him. Didn't change his mind on his living for God and on his God. Hey, listen. Let me give you three things right quick. In verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. Just, so what does that mean? What does that just mean? He was right with God. Pretty simple, ain't it? He wanted to live for God. He was right with God. Hey, he kept the commandments. He done what God said to do. He lived for him. Hey, hey, he went serving him. Started building that ark. Probably didn't understand everything, but he went building that ark because God said do it. He was just obedient. You know what the Bible said in the book of 1 Peter 2 and 9? In other words, if I could just put that in a good definition, he lived right. Are we seeing that? Some, but how many? I don't know how many heard Jimbo this morning. And he's dealing with it at his church on Christians. What well, we was talking about the other day. Everybody says there's a Christian, they ain't a Christian. Huh? Hey, just because you say I'm a Christian, I don't mean you're a Christian. And he gets to it. 
A lot of people's Christian on Sunday morning. At home they get up, dress up, and they come to church. And their neighbors see them come to church. They say, oh, that's a Christian. But then when they go back outside and go home, more than likely before they get to the vehicle, probably in the vehicle, they already got Willie Nelson on there. Would, would Jesus do that? Had they probably already planning on not coming back to church. They're already planning on going to do something else. Have a good time. Huh? I'm telling you, Christian is one that lives right and is Christ-like. Hey, when they were first called Christians at Antioch, it's because they were so much like Jesus. And they said, hey, that's a Christian right there. Hey, Brother Jimbo said this morning, whenever you see the word Christian, you find suffering. I don't see a lot of Christians suffering. Do you? Hey, listen, I don't see a lot of people being hung on a cross upside down. Hey, I don't see a lot of Christians being persecuted for what they believe. That's sure they may get cussed out or something. There ain't a whole lot getting persecuted. Hey, we're so afraid what people's going to say. Oh, listen. How do you live right? Hey, listen, the Bible said in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That don't mean you're act strange. That means you're different. Hey, that don't mean like you. I've heard people, preachers, use that word peculiar thinking that you're sort of strange, acting weird. It means you're different. It means that there's a light shining out there on the workplace. He said that ye should, not that ye might, show pray, forth praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Titus chapter 2. The Bible said, Nor found grace in the eyes of God. And you know what followed that? Followed grace in Titus? That's what it done. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should be, live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Singing Cooks come out with a song years ago. And this is what it was. What's wrong with living right? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with dressing right? Hey, what's wrong with talking right? Hey, what's wrong with being right and living right for God? Hey, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. And God says you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, that ye should show praises unto him. They ain't going to do that looking like a world dressing like a world. Hey, listen, Noah was a just man. He was right with God, and he lived right. Oh, listen. Not only that, but it said also he was a perfect. That does not mean sinless. That does not mean they didn't have fault. It means mature. You know what God wants us to do? Grow up. Hey, the writer, Paul said it right in the book of Corinthians. When I became a man, hey, when I was a child, I spake as a child. When I become a man, I put away childish things. Oh, I'm telling you, I've had a lot of childish things happen over the years. Had a guy, I, I, all I done, the preacher was looking for an organ and all I done, I said, we got one here at church. I said, I'll sit, check on it and see what about it. And, uh, you know, I didn't know if it had some uh, family thing to it or what. But I, I said, I'll check on it for you. I'll check on it. He didn't even answer my post, my comment. He didn't even, I mean, I, I, mean, I hadn't heard nothing else from him. I just commented on it. On Saturday evening, I had a guy call me, really ready to tear me up because I was going to give back to that preacher. I said, wait a minute. I said, I didn't say I was going to give it to him. I said, I was going to check on it. And you know what he said? He said this. Well, I was misinformed. Some 
can't say what I'm wanting to say. Yeah, I get it. Please help me. Yowler back. Carnal Christian. Seen that and said, hey, I tell you what. Hey, I've, I've seen them in here agreeing with something that was going on that wasn't right, that they thought I was in the wrong. I've seen it. Oh, listen. I mean, I didn't look at them right between the eyes. I'm sitting there. That's right. That's what it is. Carnal. Noah didn't have that problem. Why? He was mature. You say, what about, what about oil? Whatever happened? Well, it's still here, and they're gone. Yep. So evidently, it didn't mean as much to them as they thought, or they'd stayed here with it. Huh? You say, what did you want to do? I wanted to call them up that evening or that morning. The more I got thinking about it, the more I started getting a little hot. And I wanted to call them and say, hey, come get the organ and take it to your house if it means that much to you. But I've been wrong in doing that. I didn't. But I wanted to. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. I got flesh just like everybody else. Right. Hey, I, I get irritated like everybody else. I get mad like everybody else. People talk about how mad they get about this, how mad they get about that. Hey, listen, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I, I, I'd probably been in jail or something by now. But I'm thankful for what's inside me. I don't boast about how mean I am or how bad I am because of what's living on the inside of me. I really don't care how bad you are. I really don't care how mad you get. I really don't care. Hey, listen. Hey, you need to live right and do right in this evil day that we're living in. Yes, I could fly mad and raise Cain on the bus, on the van. I tell you, I, I'll be honest with you about... Thursday, I was getting a little irritated. I had to go clean up on cattail about as far back as you can go, I think. I mean, it was way back up in there. And, and it was getting a little late, and I had people going to appointments. And, and uh, I mean, I was getting a little, sent me to a wrong address. I'm sitting on Rolling Hill and still a Rolling Branch. And times are running low. I'm, I'm getting a little tense. And I didn't fuss at people on the van. But evidently they could sense it. There was nobody hardly saying anything all the way to ice for them. That's unusual. I'm human like everybody else. Hey, listen, but what the proper thing is you need to be mature. You need to grow spiritually. You say, Are you up there? Not at all. I'm still growing. You're still growing. We ain't rest that potential. But he was perfect. It was mature. He was not carnal. I'm going to tell you about this carnal, Brother Jeff mentioned it this morning. But I'm going to give you three things about carnal. What Paul said the church current was because they were carnal. He said, first of all, there's jealousy among you. Well, they sang more than I sang. Then you probably don't need to sing. Well, they preach more than I preach, then you probably don't need to preach. Hey, they, they, they do this more than I do. And all it is is jealousy. You say, I ain't jealous. That's all it is. You know what you ought to do? Come to church say, Lord, whatever you want me to do. And the pastor asks you to pray. If you don't ask you to pray, say, I'm going to have church. Hey, quit worrying about everybody else. And hey, listen, I know this is going to shame me back tonight and we can shout tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Picked a good day for him to come, didn't I? Oh, listen. He said there's jealousy. There's envy because you're carnal. Yeah. And not only that, he said there's strife. Yeah. Always wanting to fight. I always want to fight, put my dukes up. I take them on. That's actually what I was wanting to do that one day. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I've been there a few times. That's that growth, mature. Hey, listen, the flesh still flesh, but hey, I'm glad spiritually growing a little bit. 
Hey, listen, I, I, I can take things a lot better now than I used to when I first started pastoring. Hey, I can take a whole lot more. Don't it bother you, preacher, this happening and that's happening? Maybe you used to it, you would have. Now all I can do is just pray. Let God take care of it. But he said something, not only a strife, but he said the vision. I'm going to tell you something. A carnal, I, I said this, Brother Jerry, and, and I, I still believe I'm right. You'll not have a trouble out of a Christian that is mature. You won't. But you know what causes division? Don't get their way. Don't get this. You know what causes that? That's carnality. Divisions yes, tear you apart. I wasn't good on math, Sherry, but is that not what that is? The vision? God are into the you know what he's into? Multiplying. Amen. Adding. You know what he said there in Peter? Add to your faith. I was actually pinning down some things like this morning down in the study. May preach from there for long. Add to your faith this and add that and, and on and on and on. Hey, listen. He's in more into adding, not dividing. And taken away. Oh, listen. Noah done something else. I'm about done. I'm about done. Last of all, he walked with God. I just love it when I preach a message that's got that phrase in it. Walk with God. Do you know? Do you know what he done? He wasn't hot and cold. I read one plate man said he wasn't hot and cold. He wasn't up and down. He wasn't in and out. He just walked with God. He didn't get tired and sit down and say, well, God, I'll I catch up with you. He walked with God. Everything he done, he walked with God. Hey, I tell you what we need. What I need, what you need, and what all Christians need, all God's people needs, is to walk with God. You know what that word, walk, walk with God, you know what that phrase is? Consistency. We're living in an inconsistent time. As long as things are going good, we'll go to church, try to live right, and be right. When things ain't, I, I admire Donna and Darren. Hey, listen, others I've seen in the church have been in a battle, and I, I know, and I see them going through that battle, and I see that, and they just go on to church. My mind goes back to that awful week in September the 30th on a Thursday when all hell broke loose in, in my home. And on Sunday morning, you know what my girls were doing? Singing up there. Once with yuns. You know what they were singing? There will be grace to help me through this trial. I'm glad they didn't quit. I'm glad that God put a, a Josh in Megan's heart. Now he's a pastor over there in Tennessee. You got to know. I ain't going to say a whole lot because she'll probably watch this. Megan was bitter. She didn't deal with it real good to start with. She could have very easily went the other way. This is how my daddy's going to be treated. I'm just going to quit God and quit everything. But she did. She become a pillar. I used to become a pillar. Hey, listen. I'm glad they didn't. How come they didn't? They just kept walking with God. Amen. Kept saying. Kept praising God. Kept enjoying the things of God. That's that walk with God. Consistently. The last church we find in the book of Revelation. The last church we find is the church of Ephesus. Or Laodicean. 
He said, because you're hot or cold, he said, I spew you out of my mouth. They were a lukewarm church. Had lukewarm people. As long as things are going good, that's the best thing ever was. But I'm going to tell you something. Problems going to come in all of our lives. Amen. And how you handle it is going to make a difference in somebody else's life. Yeah. I work for Leona. She come on a, on a Monday, Tuesday night. Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday, I guess it was, I think. Can revival. Sat right there with Lucille. Got Lucille. Got, I, I don't know what happened, but they went to the altar. Got her life right. Being interested in getting things out of her life. That's what happens when you get your life right. Amen. The things ain't right. You want to get rid of it and do all that. But I never will forget at work. She's telling them about the revival. The boss made a statement. Did you get right? She said, actually, I did. And he said this. I thought there was a glow about you. People see a difference. Yep. Even now, I mean, I wouldn't want to make her mad. I mean, I'm sure she could probably <laughs> whoop me. I don't know. But uh, there's a difference in her. There's a difference in me. There's a difference in you. When God gets a hold of your heart, there'll be a difference. So what do I do after that? Just walk with him. Walk with him. Just walk with him. Well, if I hit a rough spot, he'll be there with you. Well, if I'm having in a storm, he's right there with you. Just keep walking with him. There's a difference in Noah's life. The Bible said that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. When he went to build the ark, when God needed somebody to build the ark, he didn't go out and get a wicked person to do it. Who did he get? Noah. That ought to tell us something right there. You want God to use you? Live right. Be mature. Be a Christian. Walk with God. And it just might be God come and say, I need you to go do something. Amongst all that, Noah did live right. I'm glad. You say, preacher, it's bad out there. Lord, it is, ain't it? I know mostly by Facebook. I don't watch the news a whole lot. Turn on occasionally. But I can tell. I didn't know about Pride Month until I seen on Facebook. God help us. I didn't understand all that. I didn't know what's going on, but it's not good. But I'm telling you, I just want to be a light. And I want to walk with God no matter how rough it gets. You can live right in troubled days. You can. Let's everybody stand. Melissa, come pay you, Anna, will you? Just play something. Sing one if you want. I don't care. But you know what? Somewhere about Thursday. Actually, Thursday morning on the way to Ice Falls. I was planning on preaching over there where I preached the other night and, and finishing that. And, and about Thursday morning, these words burning my heart all day long. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. All day on Friday, then yesterday, and God began to piece it together. I wonder, you hear this morning say, Preacher, I'm having trouble living right. Walk with God. You know what? When you're walking with Him, it's a whole lot easier to talk to Him, ain't it? I've been, if I'm walking somebody, I mean, it's hard to talk to them if they're way up yonder. I, I try to do that on the van, being sitting in the back, be trying to talk to them. I can't hear a word you're saying. Oh, but when you're walking with God, you can talk to them a lot better. 
You got a need this morning while she plays. You just need me, just need to come pray. Or the others. Father, we sure do love you this morning. God, I thank you for being so good to us. God, you know the need on every heart. God, you know that, and it's not where they are to be. God, I ask be merciful to them. God, deal with them. God, you know what's on people's minds this morning. God, I pray, many hurting. God, I ask you to help them be with Don and Darren, be with, uh, be with Hazel. Lord, I pray for Brother Larry and Jane. And God, Brother Mike and his family. And, well, God, no doubt others sitting here this morning that are dealing with stuff I don't even know nothing about. But God, I sure do, I'm glad you do. God, I ask you to help them. And Father, we'll honor you and we'll praise you and give you glory for everything that you do. I love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.